Welcome back everybody. Two things before we get started. If you can like and subscribe, it helps the channel in huge ways. Second is that there are time codes in the description and there are chapter markers all along the timeline of the video. If there's anything specific you're looking for, you can go ahead on the timeline or in the uh, time codes in the description to find what you're looking for. But either way, let's jump right into the video. So today I have the very first release of the Adidas Fear of God basketball shoe or Adidas Fear of God first basketball or Adidas Fear of God basketball one or Fear of God Adidas I basketball. What I'm trying to say is that the naming scheme or naming nomenclature is a little bit weird on the website. Um, I got these directly from the Fear of God website. The naming scheme is weird, but the shoe is beautiful. To give a little bit of a backstory on this shoe specifically and what it means is, you know, before this collaboration, Jerry Lorenzo, founder of Fear of God, was collaborating with Nike. And I think the common theme I'm seeing in a lot of people who design with Nike is that there is a lot of uh, tension from a designer's uh, perspective in terms of what Nike allows people to do. And what I see a lot of the time is people jumping ship from Nike to Adidas. And from what I've read, it happens vice versa, Adidas to Nike. But either way, Focusing on this specific uh, theme or this specific story, Jerry Lorenzo ended his uh, collaboration with Nike. He had already at that point produced the Nike Air Fear of God 1. And calling it the Air Fear of God 1 is, you know, intending it to be the first of many. But unfortunately, um, it was just the only one. And so at this point, he had uh, a few shoes from that line. He had the Air Fear of God 1. He had the Air Fear of God Mock. He had the Air Fear of God Raid. Um, and they were all pretty good looking shoes overall. Um, but, you know, from what I've read, it seems like he got a little bit frustrated with what Nike was allowing him to do. And that's what Nike does. They kind of have a lot of control over what they do over the product, marketing, all that fun stuff. And I think if there's anything I understand about Jerry Lorenzo is that he's a very creative person, uh, wants creative freedoms. But either way, in December of 2020, um, Jerry Lorenzo, in tandem with Adidas, announced a long-term partnership, as they call it, of Fear of God and Adidas. And the Adidas basketball division was going to be basically overseen by Jerry, Jerry Lorenzo. And it was kind of like a tight integration between Fear of God Athletics, which was newly launched and newly announced, along with the Adidas basketball. And it was more so seeming to be kind of moving in lockstep. That was December 2020. Now, myself and, you know, specifically, I'm wondering what is what has come from this collaboration. We had a launch of some collections from Adidas that looked very reminiscent of what Fear of God produces in terms of the looks and styles. You know, a lot of, as they call it, earth tones. I'm not a fashion person, um, but what they call earth tones, so black, grays, browns, and all that fun stuff. They had collections around those types of color schemes, and a lot of people thought, Maybe this is from the Jerry Lorenzo collaboration and they wanted to set the record straight, Adidas and Jerry Lorenzo, and say, this is not part of the Fear of God collection. Fear of God is coming eventually. Um, and that was at the start of 2023, I believe. So fast forward to about September, August, and it was announced that the Fear of God Adidas collection, the first collection, would actually uh, be featured in a runway show at the Los Angeles Coliseum, I believe it was. And it's a lot of fanfare. I was excited just because I finally got to see what the end product is because, you know, Jerry has offered up a lot of updates from the time of the start of the partnership all the way up to the launch of the first drop. And it was a lot of uh, Jerry and his team visiting Adidas headquarters um, to look at the archives and figure out what the design direction was going to be um, without borrowing too heavily from any of those shoes. And, um, what you saw was a lot of DNA from Adidas in the Fear of God collection, but with a heavy dose of Fear of God influence in terms of just the way everything's cut and the way, you know, the color palettes were and all that fun stuff. But either way, they finally had a Fear of God atmosphere experience in LA. I live in Philadelphia. Um, now I live in New Jersey, but, you know, I live in the Philadelphia area and you know, obviously making it out to Los Angeles isn't a possibility for me, but they had an experience where people were able to buy the entire collection. Um, but what I noticed immediately off the bat was, and what I know about Fear of God is it is a ultra premium product or, uh, you know, luxury 
items that they sell. The essentials part of Fear of God is meant to be a bit more affordable, still premium priced for normal loungewear and hoodies and things of that nature. So athletics was, where are we going to price athletics? And in reality, athletics ended up getting priced kind of in between Fear of God Mainline and Fear of God Essentials. Um, and that's kind of how they've positioned it. So a lot of the pieces were premium price products, jackets, t-shirts. I'll give you an example of a t-shirt. It was about $160, which is on the higher end, but I assume it's a good quality heavyweight cotton t-shirt. Um, the sneakers, you know, you had a pair of sneakers, the ones that I ended up getting, the basketball shoe, those were $250. That's a premium price product. And there's no animal based product. There's no leathers or suede or anything like that on there. Um, and that, you know, to each his own, but either way, that wrapped up and I was curious, when is it going to be time for an online release? And is that going to happen at all? And fortunately for the fans, fortunately for the people who are just, you know, curious, that finally happened and they did an online online release and, I, you know, lots of hoodies and things of that nature. Um, premium priced, you know, some of the pieces were five, six hundred dollars. A lot of the shoes were on the higher end of the pay, you know, the, the pricing scale. Um, so that deterred me from collecting a lot of the pieces, but I really did want to try out that fear of God basketball shoe more so because I was curious about it. You know, it's been a long time coming more specifically. I'm very curious and very excited for that other basketball shoe. I'll throw up as a, um, B roll, uh, photo that was kind of, um, shown at the fat, the show that he had at the LA Coliseum, but that shoe didn't release. I'm assuming it's going to be in the second drop. Uh, whenever that actually happens, but the fear of God basketball and athletics in general seems to be headed in the right direction I'm really excited for what they have going on But for now I have the fear of God basketball shoe Basketball one or basketball first or first basketball Either way, let's jump into it. So a lot of my sneaker videos. I will you know what draws me to sneakers is uh, you know, the retail packaging experience. My very first video was my LeBron 19 video. And it, what drew me to that shoe was one, the design and two was the retail packaging. I just thought it was one of the coolest, you know, retail packaging experiences I'd seen in a while. And you don't get that too often, but I know with fear of God, with the Nike air fear of God one, um, that packaging experience was, you know, unparalleled. A lot of Nike shoes don't come packaged that way. Um, you know, you had like a lot of foil and, and things like that, high-end materials. Like this is a high-end shoe with like really high quality leathers, suede, and all that fun stuff. I mean, it has a double stack zoom in the heel and a full length zoom air uh, bag all along the shoe with nice little metal zipper on the back that I actually broke trying to get it on. But in general, you know, one thing I know about Fear of God is that you're gonna get a premium um, packaging experience and the Air Fear of God, I'm sorry, the Adidas Fear of God basketball shoe is no exception. Um, it's, you know, getting it out of the shipping package, immediately you have a sleeve around the basketball shoe or a sleeve around the basketball shoe's box. So there's a sleeve, you pull the sleeve out, and then you have the actual basketball shoe box. And immediately I thought it's embossed with a rounded Jerry Lorenzo, you know, um, inspired or twist on the three stripes but it's actually in like a rubber and it doesn't it is it's hard to explain you know i can get so much on the video but it's just it's a rubber three stripes you know embossed on the shoe box and then you have the glazed um, adidas logos around the box itself pulling that box apart on the inside you're greeted with what i can only call i really don't know what to call it it reminds me of the rfid bags that you know, kind of you put things in there to avoid getting your information stolen. Um, I'm sure people know what I'm talking about. You don't see them too often today, but these bags are one Velcro. So they're resealable um, rather than like a Ziploc. So they're resealable Vel Velcro foil bags. And then you pull the shoe out of the bag. And again, that shoe is covered in paper, wrapped in paper, you know, very tightly. And again, individually wrapped shoes. So again, it's a premium priced product. It's a premium package product, so you kind of see where the budget went for these shoes. So you get the shoe out of the foil bag. I don't even want to call it foil because it doesn't crumple. It's just a plastic, silver, shiny bag. But you pull it out of the bag, and you're greeted with this, like, beautiful shoe. 
Um, the silhouette, everything about it is just fantastic. I mean, look at this thing. Um, just a good looking shoe. It grew on me. I, I will admit that I wasn't a huge fan of this shoe um, when it was first announced, but it has easily you know, grown on me. Um, it's grown on me over the you know last few months and then getting it in hand it's been just a, a beautiful looking shoe um, from a design perspective I've been very happy with it very impressed by the materials and things like that again there's no suede or leathers but it doesn't take away from the quality of the shoe or the experience of the shoe now the next part of the experience is the design so you know you have Jerry, who went to the Adidas archives, and he looked at lo a lot of what Adidas has already produced and wanted to incorporate that DNA in his shoes. And so um, immediately with this shoe, you have, um, you know, kind of some similarities to the Fear of God line. So you have a lot of Fear of God DNA. So that midsole is like a very, very thick, you know, that's like three C's thick midsole um, in like a translucent cream color. And it's very reminiscent of a lot of what Fear of God does today. You know, a lot of their shoes feature the same type of midsole. Even the Fear of God 1 has that same type of midsole where it's uh, very thick, 3C thick. Um, but it's uh, very reminiscent or very, you know, I guess influential for the Fear of God line in general. And then on the outsole. The outsole is tried and true herringbone. I mean... You don't get any more fundamental than that. You don't want to, you know, do anything crazy. You don't want to kind of reinvent the wheel. Um, with the Air Fear of God 1, they went with a radial uh, pattern for the, you know, for the outsole. So, obviously, radial is a very, very good traction pattern. Very grippy, obviously. These are a very good shoe. I've never played basketball in them. I would never do that. One, because they cost so much money. And two, they're, you know, they aren't the most... Um, secure shoe i guess you could say um but this shoe in particular has radial on the air fear of god one on the adidas fear of god one or adidas fear of god basketball one you have the again tried and true herringbone all throughout now what i re was reminded of with this shoe was the yeezy quantum so this is the uh, adidas yeezy quantum the only difference is you have a cutout on the heel for the Quantum for the Boost, whereas this one, you know, the Adidas Fear of God shoe is just plain herringbone all throughout. Super simple, um, you know, and just kind of the aesthetic that Fear of God goes with. Moving on to the front of the shoe or the toe, you have the Adidas logo, kind of D or embossed, you know, right on the front of the toe. So it's the Adidas logo embossed, kind of in the fear of God fashion that they kind of um, announced when they first announced the partnership, he kind of gave a uh, sample of what to expect from the fear of God collaboration on the heel tab. You have the fear of God tab, and that's kind of a signature thing of fear of God in general. So fear of God always has some type of um, design details like that. Even on the air fear of God one, you have fear of God on the heel tab. Um, so it's just, again, design details and a lot of DNA from the Fear of God line. Moving to the upper, you also have a Fuse upper, TPU Fuse upper, um, which provides a lot of, I guess, stability, a lot of um, rigidity. You know, if people are gonna be playing basketball in these, you want a lot of protection and a lot of containment. That Fuse upper provides that and it's over a knit body, but basically, the entire upper of the shoe is a one piece, um, you know, it's just a one piece unit. Now, initially that scared me because one piece uppers generally are harder to get on your foot. They're just very unforgiving. And if anyone has had the opportunity to wear a fuse upper shoe or shoes with fuse uppers, even on the toe box, it kind of creates a lot of restraint, kind of like squeezes your toes or pinches your toes. And this has fuse on the toe box and all throughout the shoe, really. Uh, but then going further back, you have a heel tab, which isn't, I don't think it's functional. My finger doesn't fit in there, but I have, you know, giant hands. But you have the little heel tab in there to help pull the shoe on. Um, I want to spend, you know, a lot of time on the sizing and things like that, and we'll get into that. But I was very fearful that this is a shoe that I'm not, not going to be able to get on my foot. I have high arches and wide feet. So 
a one piece upper is just usually impossible for me to get on. But either way, we'll get into that later. You have a um, plastic cage or a TPU cage, I think it is, around the foot for stability and containment. Um, then you have a little bit of a pulley system to pull the shoe tight around the ankle collar area. You have a toggle for the laces, and then you actually have metal, metal aglets on the laces for the shoe. And then you have a neoprene uh, booty around the collar of the shoe. So um, it's very soft, it's very stretchy, and very forgiving. So you're gonna get the shoe on. Um, obviously you're gonna fit it through this neoprene sock or neoprene collar, and it should be easy to get on. On the inside of the shoe, um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this on camera, but you have little pods around the Achilles tendon area, uh, more so for cushioning, comfort, pillow, you know, it's basically a pillow. And then you have a glazed Adidas logo on the insole of the shoe. Overall, um, it's a very well-built shoe. It's a great looking shoe. Um, design details, everything is just very premium. Um, I don't think there's anywhere where they skimped out on, in my opinion. And I'm very happy with the end product. At $250 is a little bit steep, especially because there's no leathers or anything like that. But if you're someone who's into something that's vegan or whatever the case may be, this is going to be the way to go for you. Now, in terms of sizing, that was my biggest fear. I, you know, for anyone who has ever had a pair of Air Fear of God ones, you know the struggle of uh, getting that shoe on your foot. I have never had as much trouble getting a shoe on as I did with the Air Fear of God ones. Um, enough that I would actually break out into a sweat getting those shoes on, and they even came with their own little shoehorn, so to speak. So they came on with this little tab on the back, and you would use it to kind of slip your shoe on. But this shoe was so just, it, again, a one piece upper with a zipper in the back. I ended up breaking the zipper trying to get the shoe on. It was, again, not to beat a dead horse, but one of the most difficult shoes I've ever had um, to try and get on my foot. It was very disappointing. But either way, um, you know, the Adidas Fear of God basketball shoe was surprisingly easy to get on. That neoprene um, sock or neoprene collar really is forgiving, so it lets you slip your foot in. Um, and honestly, it's just a super easy shoe to get on. Size-wise, the toe box is a little bit loose. Again, I have wide feet, high arches, and so a lot of shoes end up being narrow. Like, I'll give you an example of like Kobe's. The Kobe 5 is, a, for me, a very narrow shoe, fits extremely tight, so generally, I go up a half size. If I'm a size 12, I go up to a 12 and a half. Um, if I really want a nice loose fit, I'll go with size, size 13. This, on the other hand, the Adidas Fear of God basketball shoe, is loose in the toe box, so a little bit room. If you want something that's a little bit of a one-of-one -one fit, you're gonna wanna go down a half size probably. Um, uh, you know, Jerry did actually go out on social media and let everybody know that he kind of messed up with the sizing, in his words and he recommended everybody go up a half size. Um, I may have seen that in the comments when he responded to someone, but he did say that he kind of messed up with the sizing. Since this is the first collection, he's gonna learn from it and make manufacturing changes or adjustments going forward, but he did admit that the sizing's a little bit off. He would recommend going up a half size. I took that recommendation, I went up a half size, and especially with Adidas, because their sizing is a little bit wonky. It's never consistent from shoe to shoe, and I think people know that, obviously, but, Going with a size 12 and a half and getting the shoe on my foot, it's very comfortable. It was easy to get on. Very, very, you know, just like surprisingly easy. And is the exact opposite of what I experienced with the Nike Air Fear of God 1. And again, for anyone who has a Nike Air Fear of God 1, you know the struggle. Now, we've talked about just about everything about the shoe on the outside. The upper, you know, the outsole, the midsole, but we haven't talked about the cushioning. Now, you know, my perspective is Boost is premium cushioning. And a lot of the premium shoes, at least they used to, use Boost, and Boost is life. And so when I got the shoe, $250 shoe, I was a little bit surprised that it came with Light Strike. Light strike. I have never had a shoe with Light Strike uh, foam in there. I started doing a little bit of research, went to weartesters.com. Wear wear and I was able to do a little bit of research and find out that Light Strike is a very good cushioning system. It's very lightweight, um, very bouncy and things like that, or that's the intent. 
Um, they're using it in their running shoes, and some people were just talking about how Light Strike Pro was able to help them break their own personal records, uh, just because of how light and bouncy and reactive it is. So that's why I assume Jerry went with Light Strike because it's a great cushioning system. Prob I'm not sure if it's cheaper or not. I know that for Boost, Adidas pays like a licensing fee to NASA, who developed the technology initially. But either way, getting these on feet um, or on foot, I was able to actually experience Light Strike for the first time. And I will say that it's soft. It's, you know, a very cushy feeling. So to be able to put these on, walk around, and be able to hang out casually with these on, I would say that these are a fantastic shoe for that, especially because of the way they fit. Um, the cushioning itself, again, is soft, it's bouncy. Um, me personally, I'm not going to be playing basketball on these, one, because of how much they cost, and two, I just haven't been able to play, you know, tore my meniscus and just various other issues. But either way, um, I don't see this being an issue in terms of playing basketball. And Jerry went out and said that his intent for the design of the shoe was something you would be able to play basketball in. You'd be able to go out, play basketball, get washed up, and then be able to go out in the same shoes, going out to the clubs or whatever the case may be. Um, because that's the intent of the shoe is to be kind of um, multifaceted. It's, you know, a basketball shoe or a sports shoe and then a casual shoe on top of that. And for all intents and purposes, I think it could work that way. Um, I would love to see some performance reviews um, to see what people think and how they actually work for people. To finish this video off, um, you know, I just want to kind of comment on the nature of the relationship between Adidas and Fear of God and this being their first drop and you know, if this is any indication, the future is going to be really exciting for the collaboration between Adidas and Fear of God. I know that there was a little bit of impatience, myself included, on when these things would actually drop. This was a deal announced three years ago. And I know Jerry wanted to take his time also working on his own collections with his Fear of God proper and Fear of God essentials. You know, you still have that business going. You don't pause the business to work on something else, obviously. So he's working on his main business. He's working on the collaboration. So three years later, the fruits of his labor, fruits of his team's labor is uh, very apparent, you know, using a lot of Fear of God DNA mixed with Adidas DNA, but also creating something entirely new, which is really cool. Um, the future is very bright. I'm very excited to see what Fear of God and Adidas does Adidas does for the future. Um, you know, if there's anything you would like to know about the collaboration or anything you would like to know about the Adidas Fear of God, Basketball 1, Basketball First, Basketball I, Basketball 1, leave a comment. If you liked the video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a great day.